Welcome to this module of uh, runaway reaction or reaction and runaway problems because these runaway problems are more critical in uh, chemical process safety. So, we thought that uh, we must give you an overview about those reaction runaways and scale up aspect. So, in this particular module, uh, we are going to discuss certain fundamental principles those who are related to the reaction runaway. Uh, we will discuss about the causes of uh, various kind of uh, over pressurization, this we will discuss about the basic concept of heat of a reaction, then adiabatic temperature rise, RNS relationship uh, and we will discuss about uh, uh, the thermal runaway uh, aspects and five factor heat losses uh, changes uh, with the time of scale. It's then we will discuss about the reagent accumulation and uh, onset temperature related to the exothermic aspects and we will discuss about uh, certain safety factors for thermal hazard data. So, let us uh, have a look about uh, the hazards those who are arising from the pressure. So, while we consider the reaction hazard, the temperature is uh, rarely a hazard on its own. Although uh, sometimes when it is within the, uh, the domain, within the controllable do domain, then nev temperature never put forward any kind of hazard. So, the impact of any temperature rise, uh, sometimes uh, may, these temperature rise may take place because of certain conditions uh, like exothermicity or cooling temperature failures, etc. So, the impact of any kind of temperature rise on the system is much more important because this may lead to the other catastrophic problems. So, there are three potential sources of uh, overpressure. One is uh, the gas generation from uh, the normal processes and this uh, uh, took place in the Bhopal gas tragedy when um, because of the high temperature the CO2 built up inside the MIC tank while, while react in, reacted with the uh, uh, water and it created a lot of problem and all the safety uh, processes they were failed. Uh, the second aspect is the vapor pressure effect uh, as a consequence of heat from the normal processes. Uh, the third one is the heat from the normal process leading to the secondary reaction at elevated temperature that is uh, gas or a vapor pressure effect in other words you can say. Now, let us have a look about the vapor pressure effect. Now, uh, this uh, vapor pressure effect is attributed to the um, Antony um, theory and uh, uh, this theory you can look in the chemical engineering thermodynamics aspect. So, this vapor pressure effect is attributed to the Antony plot. Now, this uh, plot is attributed to the Antony equation. So, the Antony equation is a class of semi-empirical uh, correlation describing the relation between the vapor pressure and a temperature for pure component. Now, why there is a need of uh, this uh, plot or uh, this relationship because in the previous slides we have discussed that uh, sometimes the temperature may lead to because temperature sometimes is a safer limit, but tem this temperature may create the problem of over pressure. So, whenever we are talking about the relationship uh, between the temperature and pressure, then we must have a certain correlations. So, Antony equation this provides the solution for this particular aspect. Now, this Antony equation is derived from the classes Clapeyron relations and it can be derived by again uh, from the sealed uh, cell data. So, this is uh, the Antony plot log uh, of uh, minus log of pressure to the base E is equal to A plus B upon C plus T that is the T is the temperature. So, um, uh, for a vapor pressure uh, system the log pressure uh, 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 log P to the base E is directly proportional to the uh, 1 upon T. So, by this way you can plot this uh, uh, logarithmic plot with the pressure versus 1 by T. Now, if we recall, if we have a gas generation uh, system, then uh, ln pressure is equal to 1 plus B upon C plus temperature plus tau. Now, where tau is a factor that is due to the generation of uh, permanent gas and uh, in that particular case, uh, this uh, log uh, ln pressure is not directly proportional to 1 upon T and you may see that the 
the nature of uh, the plot would be like this. Let us have a look about the heat of a reaction. This is a very common phenomena. So, we will not devote much time towards this uh, particular as aspect because in chemical engine thermodynamics or engineering thermodynamics, um, you have gone through this um, uh, heat of a reaction aspect, usually represented by delta HR and uh, uh, it is having the unit of kilojoule per mole. So, let us see that uh, uh, for a reaction A plus B, this gives the product say maybe C. So, the heat of a reaction is the quantity of a heat released or absorbed as a product are formed. So, um, there are two type of heat of a reaction, one is exothermic when the heat is released and the second is the endothermic when heat is absorbed by the system. Now, you can see there in this particular slide, we have listed some reference heat of a reaction like acid or base neutralization may have an exothermicity of 60 uh, kilojoule per mole, then esterification of uh, methanol or acetic anhydride as having the, the exothermic uh, heat of reaction uh, 67 kilojoule per mole, then hydrolysis may have a, uh, a heat of reaction of minus 97 kilojoule per mole, Di uh, diagotization that is the substituted amine hydrochloride having the heat of reaction in the range of say minus 117 kilojoule per mole. Then methylation that is this may have a heat of reaction of minus 104 kilojoule per mole. And Grignard reaction it may have a heat of a reaction minus 200 kilojoule per mole. Now, uh, the standard heat of a reaction you can have from uh, various handbooks. Now, let us have a look about the adiabatic uh, temperature rise. So, the total temperature rise in the reacting system due to exothermic activities uh, where there, there no heat loss uh, to the surrounding and it is given by delta T adiabatic is equal to delta HR uh, into N upon MCP5. Now, here N is the number of moles of a reactant, Cp is the heat capacity having the units of joule kilogram inverse and Kelvin inverse, delta HR is having the heat of a reaction, M is the mass in the reactor which is in having the unit of kilogram and phi factor, uh, we will explain this in uh, the subsequent slides later on. Another aspect is uh, the reaction rate. This is uh, attributed to the Arrhenius uh, relationship and which is represented as k is equal to a e to the uh, power minus e upon rt where k is the rate constant, a is uh, the frequency factor, uh, e is the activation energy, r is the rate of heat production is depend on the reaction rate for the pseudo first order by dq is upon dt is equal to k delta hr um, to m. Now, this dq dt is the rate of uh, heat production. Now, this k is the rate constant having the first order and m is uh, the quantity of a reagent available at time t. Uh, now, let us have a brief look about the reaction kinetics and uh, you must not confuse about uh, the delta hr and uh, Ea, they have uh, the same units. So, delta HR that is the heat of a reaction is the overall energy change during a process. So, high delta um, HR that is uh, the heat of reaction, a lot of energy change and a low uh, 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 heat of a reaction then a small amount of energy change may take place. So, low Ea, Ea is the energy required to initiate the change. So, if we are having the low Ea, that is facile reaction occur at a lower temperature or a pressure and if you are having the high Ea that is a difficult reaction only occurs at a higher temperature or a pressure. So, these are the certain suggestive measures for the reaction kinetics. Let us have a discussion about uh, the uh, kinetics of heat release or sometimes loss. The heat uh, release rate uh, that is from an exothermic reaction increases exponentially with the temperature. So, this is a very you can say the catchy line so that you can analyze that if any kind of catastrophe may take place then how we can analyze that how much quantum of the heat release it from the kinetic studies. Now, heat loss rate now from a chemical reactor increases linearly with the temperature with this uh, formula dq by dt is equal to u a delta t where u is the heat transfer coefficient having the unit of watt meters uh, uh, to the power minus 2 uh, Kelvin inverse and a is the heat transfer area 
usually represented in square meter and delta T is the temperature difference between contents and a jacket. So, delta T is important. Uh, sometimes you may experience the thermal runaway problems uh, and uh, as we have discussed the governing equation is uh, this one. Now, here uh, the dq by dt is uh, on the y axis and a temperature on the x axis. So, you need to find out that what is the critical temperature over which uh, there may be a chances of thermal runaway reaction. So, in case uh, if uh, by any means uh, um, if there is any exothermic process and excess heat being liberated then you need to find out that how much quantity of heat removal is required for uh, cooling so that it may uh, work below this uh, critical temperature radiation. Now, since if uh, uh, by any means it goes beyond this uh, critical temperature range then there may be a chance of thermal runaway and you need to take the appropriate safety measures to overcome such kind of scenario. In past there may are several reactions they took place because of this thermal runaway aspect. Now, remember a thermal runaway is the progressive production of heat from a chemical process and occurs when the rate of heat production exceeds the rate of heat removal. So, uh, that means uh, certain imbalance took place between the cooling aspect and the, the heat production of aspect because the exothermicity is known. So, you can analyze this scenario and you can take the, the appropriate measures to uh, control this uh, particular catastrophic approach. Now, there may be several causes for the thermal runaway. So, studies have determined that thermal runaway reactions occur due to the uh, various reasons uh, and we have enlisted four reasons uh, for this one. Sometimes insufficient understanding of the process chemistry and the energy kinetics of the desired reaction that means, uh, sometimes uh, you may negate the effect of uh, um, exothermicity. Sometimes it may lead to the improper design of heat transfer capacity required for the plant. Now, this is again very important because uh, you know theoretically that how much quantum of heat being generated in that particular process. So, if uh, your design is below the particular heat capacity, then definitely you, you, may, you are approaching towards the thermal runaway aspect. Sometimes insufficient understanding of the adverse reaction and control including the plant safety backup system as well as the adequate emergency venting. Again, it is very crucial aspect and attributed to the, the design of uh, uh, the reactor. Uh, sometimes inadequate written batch procedures and a poor operator training because sometimes it may, it may approach to this uh, um, particular reason. and. Uh, the, the process condition surpasses this uh, particular critical temperature zone and if uh, the operator they are not trained to handle the scenario then definitely the plant may land in trouble because of the thermal runaway aspect. So, never assume a chemical is non-hazardous because uh, of a low hazard rating and many incident involve uh, um, material having uh, they have a, have a, uh, having the national fire protection uh, association hazard rating between 0 to 1, but they became the catastrophic uh, in due course of time. So, it is best to develop a proper testing uh, program to identify and characterize all reactive materials and reaction mixtures under a variety of process conditions. So, that is uh, uh, very much uh, needed because um, in like in Bhopal, uh, there was I mean it was unlikely that water mill will meet uh, MIC and these are the very much reactive and created the and uh, the, the reaction is exothermic in nature and uh, the system was not designed at all for to cater this type of uh, scenario. So, uh, if you are having uh, the hazard rating in between 0 to 1 do not save that uh, do not uh, think that this particular uh, system is safe you have to take the proper measures uh, to safeguard the system. Uh, subsequently, a process hazard analysis uh, that can be used to assign the appropriate control and a safeguard to reduce uh, uh, risk of an adverse event. Uh, that is again a very important aspect because uh, no chemical is non-hazardous. Now, it is important to remember to update the process safety information as a process under uh, as process undergoes changes during the life cycle. Now, the interim process safety information reports 
uh, can then uh, serve as a reference for the technology transfer purpose as the process scales from uh, research and development aspect, labs, pilot plant to the commercial production stages. Now, once the process has been set, the final process safety report then can be used by the variety of end users, maybe in house or by outsourced facilities. So, when uh, developing the safety documentation, it is important to keep in mind that it must comply with the company or industry policy and the procedures as well as the country and the local regulations because sometimes um, based on the gravity of uh, the system, the local authorities or national authorities may impose certain regulations uh, to the thing. So, while designing or while developing all kind of safety related issues, we must know because certain areas may be designated as a green area, certain may be as an industrial area. So, we must know that what are those regulations, those who are governing and which we need to comply while designing the safety documentation. There are certain things they are related to the kinetic complications. Uh, now, beware of assuming uh, simple kinetics uh, for autocatalytic reactions, sometimes heterogeneous reactions. Um, uh, mass transfer may be uh, the rate determining step, sometimes uh, phase transfer agents may dictate the rate. So, you must know the complexity of the reactions, um, maybe the multiple steps or uh, in a single step, what are the different routes of those complex reactions. So, these are the various complications they are associated with the kinetics or uh, chemical kinetics of the process in question. Now, let us have a look about the phi factor. Uh, this is a correction factor which is based on the ratio of the total heat capacity of a vessel and the total heat capacity of the vessel contents. So, the phi factor approaches the value of one for a large vessels and for extremely light vessels or at a genuine adiabatic conditions. Now, uh, phi factor is usually equivalent to the thermal inertia. Uh, let us have a look about this uh, again the basic equation A plus B is, uh, they are converting into the product. So, phi factor is uh, um, designated as phi is equal to 1 plus mass of container into the heat capacity of uh, the container divided by the mass of the sample uh, into heat capacity of the sample. So, it is quite simple. Now, the heat generated in an exothermic reaction is consumed in three ways in the usual way to raise the temperature of the reaction mass, so whatever inside the reactor. Sometimes it is used to raise the temperature of the reactor and sometimes it may attribute it to the heat loss to the environment. So, you may experience that the reactor is having the heat. Now, if uh, phi is greater than 1, then it is considered in the thermodynamic and the kinetic calculation. So, we have enlisted uh, several uh, cases when uh, 1 cubic meter glass lined uh, reactor, then jacket is empty, the phi factor is 1.41, 10 meter cube uh, glass lined reactor when jacket is empty, 1.13. Um, uh, 10 gram of carrier tube screening test that is uh, 2.50 uh, uh, accelerating rate calorie meter 1.50 then adiabatic uh, pressure devar calorie meter uh, 1.05 so let us think about the testing this testing should uh, consider uh, the consequences of all conceivable process deviation uh, this should be conducted under the plant scale heat loss uh, condition or uh, have an, an appropriate safety factor applied. Uh, this should uh, replicate the plant condition in all ways possible including the use of plant material, consideration of material of uh, plant construction, etcetera. Now, let us have a look about the rate 
reaction accumulation we are not going to devote much time because we are all aware about the accumulation. So, uh, this is a condition when the rate of reaction reactant addition is more than the rate of a reaction. So, you need to plot this dq by dt versus time. So, initially you may experience the rapid uh, reaction growth and then there is a scenario when there may be a chances of uh, slow kinetics. So, this is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the zone where you can think about the work of uh, a period. Now, this is usually determined by the process analysis, I uh, will uh, discuss about the causes in not in a very exhaustive manner. Now, sometimes you may take uh, the wrong kinetic assumptions and this may be a very uh, extremely catastrophic, uh, but uh, fortunately in uh, chemical engineering aspect uh, whatever wrong kinetics we take uh, it is only just at the design level. So, when it is a scale up, when it is uh, at the, under the pilot plant study, then we can remove all kind of deficiencies which we have taken at the early stages. Sometimes it may attribute it to the inefficient agitation because in agitation sometimes the particle may get deposited over the, the impellers etcetera if you are using those impellers, uh, then uh, the, the rate of agitation may go on decreasing and that particular things may be uh, the problematic and attributed to the reaction accumulation. Sometimes the poor temperature control may lead to the reaction accumulation, sometimes the impurity is attributed either to reactant and sometimes the non-intermittent removal of uh, those impurities from the reaction mass uh, may create the problem of reaction accumulation. And uh, sometimes the incorrect uh, initiation may be because of the contaminated raw product, uh, raw material sometimes may be attributed to the, the poor temperature and the pressure control at a startup. This may attributed to the, re the reaction accumulation. Now, let us have a look about the onset temperature. Uh, that is the basic concept. The onset temperature is the temperature at which uh, reaction can be detected under the prevailing heat loss and a 5 factor condition of the test. So, for a given reaction it is equipment dependent and uh, not a constant and uh, normally quoted as a temperature at which the rate of uh, self heating exceeds a threshold value. So, sometimes the knowledge about this uh, particular aspect is essential while designing the safety aspect. Now, let us have a look about various safety factors. So, safety factors are applied for these uh, runaway reactions uh, to collect data in high phi factor or high heat loss test equipment. Now, 50 to 100 uh, Kelvin for a screen test, uh, 10 to 15 K for the adiabatic test. Now, this always apply for a conservative factor to account for kinetic deviation between the, the reaction types. Now, one must beware of uh, autocatalytic reaction or a process uh, with an induction or inhibition period. You may also consider the availability of air while assessing the results. So, let us have a preliminary hazard assessment uh, in uh, safety consideration. You need to determine the thermal stability of all reaction component or mixtures within the minimum and maximum process temperature which you can attain under the worst case scenario. Because worst case scenario, they are sometimes the deciding factors. Uh, you need to identify the unwanted interactions between the reagents and the solvent. Sometimes you need to identify the potential reaction containments that may have an inhibitory or catalytic effect on the desired reactions. Now, another is the quantification of desired reactions. So, you need to determine the heat of reaction and off gas rates uh, uh, for the desired and quench reaction including the heat resulting from accumulation of a reagent or a slow forming intermediates. Sometimes the, uh, you need to determine the maximum adiabatic temperature for the reaction and uh, determine the basis of safety relative to estimate boiling point of uh, the reaction mixture and understand the relative rate of all chemical reaction and sometimes this inclusive of all kind of side. Um, unwanted reactions and a major reactions etc. Uh, then you need to go for the quantification of adverse reaction. Now, by this way you need to assess the thermal stability of a reaction mixture over a wide temperature range. So, while optimizing the robustness of uh, the process uh, 
कंसिडर अदर रिएक्शन वेरिएबल्स सच एज पी एच कंसनट्रेशन कन्वर्जन रेट ऑफ गैस रेट स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ स्टार्टिंग एंड प्रोडक्ट सबस्ट्रेट्स एट्सेट्रा इन सोल्यूशन और एज एसलरी एट्सेट्रा सो यू मे कंसिडर ऑल द प्रोबेबिलिटीज ऑल द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग then you consider the potential and impact of unwanted vapor phase reactions and develop a chemical interaction matrix uh, uh, for material present in the reaction mixture then you need to classify the reactivity and communicate this information to the operational person so it it has a various step involved for whenever the quantification of uh, these adverse reactions are in question then next phase is the plant consideration now you need to conduct a basic energy balance to consider the heat during the various additions heat generation during the chemical reaction and the heat removal capacity or capability of the plant reactor system now remember to include the reactor agitation as a source of energy because sometimes we may skip this important aspect while considering this plant consideration uh, now consider the impact of uh, possible deviation from the intended reactant charges and operating conditions then you need to identify all heat sources connected to a reaction vessel and assume the maximum possible worst case scenario then you determine the effect of uh, lowest possible temperature to which uh, the reactor heat transfer fluid could cool the reaction mixture maybe uh, that is the coating of heat transfer surfaces etc and then consider the impact of temperature gradient and other issues such as increased viscosity freezing at the reactor walls falling and so on in plant scale equipment so in this particular uh, um, module we have considered the uh, various aspects of runaway reactions uh, what is the importance we discussed about the 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 safety consideration issues etc so if uh, you wish uh, you can have a look of all these uh, references uh, in this particular slides those who are given uh, thank you very much